All right, welcome back. So now that we're done with the facing, roughing, and finishing of the OD, we're gonna get started with our first C-axis machining operation. So basically we wanna machine this area right here, but the parts that you cannot get to with a turning lathe. Let's go ahead and open up the solid model real quick in SolidWorks to go over that. So basically I wanna machine these areas right here that are left over that I simply can't machine with a turning lathe. Let's go ahead and minimize that and get started. First, let's go ahead and clean up our part real quick. First, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse all of my four operations. I'm gonna select all of them, hold the control key and select T. That will make all your toolpath disappear. This way you don't see everything right there on your screen. The next thing I want you to do is to come over here under levels and make level two visible. Make sure to check level two so you are on it and then make level one invisible. This way we can focus on level two and all the solids that are on there. I'm gonna go back to toolpath over here and go ahead and rotate my part so I can see it a little bit better in isometric view. Now, as you can see over here, this gray area that you see right here that's still popping up, this is your stock. Also in the back here is your stock. So we need to machine the leftover area over here all around my part using the C-axis machining operation. Let's go ahead and learn that. So first come over here under turning and under the C access section, go ahead and expand the gallery and you should notice six features. We're gonna be learning all of them in this exercise and also in the next one. Go ahead and select face contour. For the chain, you wanna make sure to select this chain right here, all around your part, and then also don't forget to select this area right here. Now the only thing about that, I want you to make sure that it is facing the other direction. So come over here and select reverse to reverse that direction. Otherwise, you might machine the inside of your part and not the outside. Select OK to accept that. Now you will see that C-axis face contour is the only feature you can use here. And let's go to Tool. So under Tool, you have no tools over here, and this is where you can select a new tool. Come over here under Select Library Tool, and then select Filter. Over here, make sure only end mill flat is selected. If it's the first time you're opening this up, it's going to show that they're all selected. So select none and then select end mill. Come over here under top tool diameter and select equal to and then select 0.75 and then select OK. This will filter for all the three quarter of an inch flat end mill. Select the three quarter inch flat end mill and then select OK. And there is your three quarter inch flat end mill. Under comments, this is where the operator sees the title of that operation. So we're gonna call this C access and we're gonna call this face contour. All right, now for the tool diameter over here, you're gonna keep it the same and all the information about the tool. And also for the feeds and speeds, we're gonna keep it the same and same as all of our exercises that we're gonna keep them as default. For the holder, this is where you can actually select a holder from the library or in our sake, we're gonna keep it as a default holder. Let's go to cut parameters. Under compensation type, we're gonna keep it the default as the computer. So the computer calculates the compensation direction and type. So the compensation direction is also picked over here and we're gonna keep it as right. For the tip comp, we're gonna leave it at tip. Roll cutter around corners, we're gonna leave it at sharp corners. Now the internal corner rounding radius, we're gonna leave this at zero. And also the external corner break radius, we're gonna leave this at zero as well. For the stock to leave on the walls and the floors, we're not gonna leave any stock on walls and floors, so keep both of those at zero. For the contour type, now there's a bunch of contour types over here. The first one being the 2D, which is just regular milling. The second one is for the 2D chamfers, but this is not used whenever you use a flat end mill. If you uh, select ramp, this is with the tool ramping up and down. Remachining is only used whenever you wanna remachine a certain area that you couldn't get to, and usually you are selecting an operation that you're remachining. And then oscillate, this is where the tool is utilized the entire length while it's machining. So basically it goes up and down using the entire machinable area. And this way the tool, the entire tool lasts a lot longer and also doesn't just focus on one little area that goes bad. So we're gonna go back and check 2D. For the depth cut, this is where you can basically tell it how deep do you want to cut each step. We're gonna go ahead and enable that. And I like to have that as half the size of the tool diameter. So our tool is three quarters of an inch. 
So the max rough step, I'm going to leave that as 0.375, which is half of 0.75. All right, for the finished cut, I want to make sure that there's one finished cut, and I'm going to tell it at 0.05. So the last 50 thou is the finished cut. I also like to have the keep tool diameter checked to make sure that the tool is always down while it's machining. It doesn't just retract up and then goes back down, but it's always down to save you time while machining. For the lead in and lead out, this is where you specify how you want the tool to come in and exit your part. We're going to leave this as off for now. Breakthrough. This is only whenever you're breaking through the part. So you're machining all the way through the part. We're not. We're actually going to be machining up to this wall right here. So we're going to leave this as off. Multiple passes are used whenever you use, for example, a tool that can't get all of this material out at once. Now, there is a reason why I'm using a three quarter inch flat end mill is because I already know that it can machine all of that at once. All right. So it all, all I need to worry about is the depth each time. But if you have a tool, for example, if you use a quarter of an inch flat end mill, then it needs to take a few multiple passes over here until it machines all the way to the depth. So that's where you, this comes in handy. So we're going to leave this as off. Under linking parameters, we're going to leave the clearance under a quarter of an inch, retract to 0.1, the feet plane to 0.1, and always use this graphical area whenever you're trying to define that. As you can see, the clearance, this is the clearance away from the part. Where it retracts to is 0.1 away from your part. And over here is the feed plane from your part is 0.1. And the stock, the top of the stock is at zero. And how deep is it machining? We're going to change this to negative 1.5. If you open up your drawing, you're going to notice that from here to here is 1.5. All right, so let's go ahead and select apply and OK. And as you can see, I see one, two, three, four tool path. And then the last one is the finishing operation. So it looks good over here. Let's go ahead and verify that in MasterCam Simulator. So come over here and select only the C axis face contour and select verify selected operation. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off access and nomen. I'm going to zoom out real quick and I'm going to go ahead and select play. And as you can see, your tool comes in with your part rotating until it machines all around your part. And when it's done, it looks very nice and clean. So it looks like we've done this correctly. And this is how you create the C axis face contour operation. In the next video, we're going to learn how to use the face drill operation in C axis.